So after years and years and years, people begging and pleading and all these kind of campaigns, the Snyder Cut has finally come out on HBO Max. I checked it out and let's talk about it. What's up, everybody? That starts back. Uh, so today we're going to talk about Zack Snyder's Justice League. So the first Justice League came out in 2017. Um, it was directed by Zack Snyder, but he had to leave mid shoot. Um, his daughter had died and he was not in the space to finish the movie. So most of the movie had been shot. Um, Josh Whedon was hired to kind of finish and drag it over the finish line. And um, yeah, the movie was not that good. I mean, it had some good action scenes. It had you know, elements of the movie that were decent, but you can tell that it wasn't what Zack Snyder um, really wanted and you know, was not his vision. So since then, and since the movie really didn't do as well as you know, people were expecting and hoped for, they have been begging and pleading for the Snyder Cut of Justice League. I was not one of those people. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I'm not a fan of the way Zack Snyder has portrayed the DC character so far. Uh, I like Man of Steel, but Superman was very dark and Superman shouldn't be a dark character. Uh, I hated Batman v Superman. I uh, did not like that movie at all. The only good redeeming quality about the movie is uh, Wonder Woman and the fight um, at the end. Other than that, the movie was just not that good. I th thought Ben Affleck, even though he was a decent Batman, was trying too hard and he really didn't have the essence of the characters. Yes, I know they're going to put their own spin on things. Yes, I know that it's not going to be straight out of the comics, but what makes a good adaptation is even though you don't copy exactly what has been done, you stay true to those characters. You stay true to that world that has been already developed. And I didn't feel Zack Snyder had been staying true to that world. I like Zack Snyder as a director. I like a lot of his movies, but I feel like he was very dark for the DC universe. Um, I felt he probably would have been better off doing some of the Marvel stuff, to be honest with you. So I was not one of those ones really clamoring for a new um, a Snyder Cut of the Justice League. Just was not one of those people. When they announced it last year, with the announcement of HBO Max, again, I was not, uh, was not happy. I wasn't, I should say not happy about it, but I wasn't looking forward to it. I knew I was gonna watch it. I knew that I would have to give it a fair shake because this is my kind of movie. This is my genre that I really enjoy. But my expectations and my hopes for the movie were really low. I made a video about it. You can check it out here. But yeah, I just was not, uh, looking forward to this. And I have to say, going in again with very low expectations and just wanting to be entertained, I was surprised. I was wrong. Um, this movie did need to be made. They should have probably just waited until Zach was in a better frame of mind. I understand, you know, money and all this other stuff is why they pushed it out. But they probably should have waited. Uh, I was entertained. So, I'm gonna break this review up into like three sections and then we're gonna talk about like, really was I entertained by the movie? Was the movie better than what we got in 2017? And overall, was this a good movie? So first part is was it entertained? And as I said, yes, I was very entertained. The action was great. The movie really flowed well with what Zack had already developed in Batman v Superman and in Man of Steel. Like this is his DC universe. And, you know, as much as I criticize it because it's very dark, I'm still entertained by these movies. Well, not so much Batman v Superman, but I really was entertained by Man of Steel. And I was entertained by this movie. Uh, Ezra Miller steals every scene that he's in. Like from the moment he's in the movie to the end, every scene that he's in, he steals to me. I love him as the Flash. Um, I'm looking forward to his movie. I can't wait to see what they do with his character and how they develop it and how they what they do with him in this universe. So I'm really looking forward to that. And I can't wait to see what they do with him. Uh, but no, again, I really love Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. She's fantastic in this. Uh, I feel like 
Um, ben Affleck is a very good Batman. Is he the best Batman? No, but he's a good Batman. He's a solid uh, Bruce Wayne. Yeah, I, I, I liked him in this. Uh, I love Henry Cavill as Superman. He's probably one of my favorite Superman. I know a lot of people don't like him as Superman, but I really do. I feel like he gets kind of a bad rap a little bit as Superman, but I think he's a very good Superman and he's a good Clark Kent. He's a good actor. I really enjoy him in this. And I, I enjoyed the whole cast. You know, I, I really enjoy the acting. I enjoy how they play off each other. I really enjoy that part. Um, I love... The fight scenes, every fight scene is is, 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 is grand. It's, it's, it's very um, encompassing and you, you like really get into what's happening. And I like that. I, I, I really enjoy what they did there with all that. Um, you know, I can't really complain about the action scenes. They're really good. It really flows well. Special effects are pretty good. Not crazy about how they did Steppenwolf or uh, even really Dark Side, to be honest with you. But overall, I like the special effects. I like like how the feel of the world was. Again, it just really blends well with what he has done previously in developing this DC extended universe. Like he's done a good job with what he's like having a consistent tone. That that's one of the things that he's done well. That Marvel has done well is having a tone carry throughout their movies even though they have different genres even though some are funnier than others and all those other things they're a consistent tone and i would give you know snyder that is a there's a tone in these three movies that he's done for dc um so yeah the movie was very entertaining i i, I enjoyed that it was um a, a quite quite the ride quite the ride so two is this movie better than what we got in uh, 2017? And the answer is an emphatic yes. I mean, the movie's way better than what we got in 2017. And, and you know, that's honestly no knock, in my opinion, against Josh Whedon. You know, he was put in a very difficult position, come in and make a movie that he would not have made. Like he, this is not a movie, Justice League is not the kind of movie, the way it was shot, the way what they had, um, that's just not how Josh Whedon movies look and feel, um, shows anything. It's just not how he is thematically. And, you know, you can tell in this, that this isn't him. Like this is, that wasn't him in 2017. Like that wasn't the kind of movie that he would have done. And unfortunately, you know, through the money and everything else, you know, they kind of had to find someone to finish it up. And I kind of wish, look now, especially now, that they had picked somebody who was more thematically and more in line with what Zach wanted, his vision. Because this movie is way different than what we got in 2017, you know. Uh, just how they edited it, how everything fit together is just more cohesive and it fit what Zach had already built in Man of Steel and Batman v Superman. Uh, not that Batman v Superman was a particularly good movie because it wasn't. I enjoyed Man of Steel, like I said earlier. But again, this was something that kind of fit better. You know, this is a continuation of what was already done. And just like, this is like that final piece to that puzzle. And yeah, it, it looked great. Um, it flowed very well. Uh, and, and, and it's just better storytelling considering what had already been developed and what they'd already shot so yeah i i definitely i was wrong i mean crow this is way better than what we got this is way better than what i was expecting um and yeah i i thoroughly enjoyed this movie i thoroughly enjoyed what they were doing and i really can't complain about what we got you know I, it, it, well, I can't complain. We'll get that in the third part. But overall, this just hands down, this is a better movie. This was worth making. And all the people who uh, wanted this were right. Um, plain and simple, you guys are right to want this movie and to want the Snyder Cut. So now part three is overall, well, my feelings on the movie. You know, taking out whether I entertain, taking out. Uh, 
uh, was this better than Justice League? That was kind of a low bar anyway. But taking into account like what I thought of the movie, and I really only have two big complaints. Three, one is a small complaint, and it's probably just personal preferences. The first two are not. First two are legitimate, just what? Okay, first, this movie had no business being four hours long. This kind of built, leads into the second reason as well. We had zero reason to be four hours long, like zero. Uh, I don't know what they were doing, honestly. I don't know why this movie was four hours long. Uh, there's so much fluff. There's so many hero shots. There's a slow-mo for no reason, and you're doing this and that. Uh, just stop. Like, why? Like, a lot of this stuff should have ended up on the cutting room floor. Prime example, and this kind of, again, it goes to the second reason. There's extra scenes in this movie that don't belong in this movie, you know? Even though, as I said earlier, Ezra Miller steals every scene that he's in, and I love him, and I cannot wait to the Flash movie. The, the scene with Iris, him saving Iris, was a total waste of time. Like, total waste of time. Again, I actually love that scene. It's a great scene. It was shot well, the action, how it flowed, it's, just, it's great. Perfect scene. Did not need it. Like, why is the scene in the movie? Totally not needed. I don't understand. Very disappointing. As far as I'm concerned, uh, I, I was very, very disappointed in that scene. I mean, just the scene being in the movie it like, didn't make any sense because they never referenced it again. We never saw Iris again. We never saw him interact with her again or anything. And it was just like, for what? Like, why did you give us that? And there's other scenes like that in the movie. Like, why? Are you using Martian Manhunter to go talk to Lois instead of just having Martha Kent talk to Lois? Like, just so you can show us Martian Manhunter? Like, what? Like, what was his purpose? Like, you're not giving us nothing. And and I felt like he's setting up future things that will never happen. You know, like, why are you giving us all this stuff in the epilogue knowing that there will never be another Just League movie by Zack Snyder? There will be another Just League movie, but this won't be one by Zack Snyder. So it's like he just threw everything into this movie because he want, knew that there was nothing coming. Like if he had been able to finish this in 2017, a lot of what we saw, a lot of what we see in the movie would not be in the movie, period. And the movie would not be three hours long. I mean, four hours long. It's probably closer to three hours long, probably under three hours. And we would have got a more concise, and in my opinion, a better flowing movie. Like we would have probably gotten some of the dark side stuff, but the movie would have ended and we probably would have got like an epilogue scene with, uh, with um, Lex Luthor and stuff on the boat with them killing dark. I mean, with them killing Steppenwolf and then moving on, you know, but he, he threw all this extra stuff in there that just wasn't needed. I, I just, I don't understand that. I do understand it. I just didn't like it. You know, it was unnecessary and made the movie what should have been a two and a half, three hour movie at the most into a four hour movie that just was just a lot of extra nothing. Just a lot of extra nothing, a lot of air, a lot of air. Um, the other thing I, I kind of like the sound design. The one thing I did probably like in the first Justice League movie, and even when you look at Batman v Superman and Man of Steel, the sound design, how they use music was better to me in those movies than what was done in this movie. Like the way they changed um, Wonder Woman's song, like when she was fighting, they would kind of play it, but it was kind of weird. Um, and just like the random, again, this goes back to useless scenes like, why do we get the scene of them singing to Arthur swimming away? But you don't tell me what they're singing. We don't know why they're singing. What is this? Like, what? Like, made zero sense. Zero sense. Don't understand. So I didn't really get like the sound design as much um, as in the other movies. And while I feel Ray Fisher was a great, uh, Victor Stone, sometimes is, I felt like he was trying too hard as Cyborg. Uh, I just wasn't feeling, I liked him. I did like him in the movie. 
But sometimes I felt like he was trying too hard at Cyborg. And it was just kind of, those scenes were kind of weird to me. Um, but yeah, overall, I, I I enjoyed the movie. I did. And while I had these criticisms of the movie, it was still a good movie. I don't think it was quite as good as um, what we've seen in the Marvel Universe. I don't feel like this is, I'm glad that they will not be another Justice League movie. Um, I'm kind of glad that maybe DC's moving on to other things, like uh, thematically different and, and really being true to the characters. Like that's what we got so far with Wonder Woman. You know, that's what we got Aquaman, which side note, how does Aquaman fit in with Justice League? Like the stories make zero sense like, together. Like whoever wrote Aquaman did not see Justice League and when they did World Justice League, they had no idea what they were doing with Aquaman. Like, those two hands did not talk at all. Makes zero sense. But anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what DC does. And, you know, like, I like Joker. I'm glad it's like a one-off thing, you know. We'll see with the Suicide Squad and with everything else, how these movies play in to this DC movie universe and what direction DC goes. I'm interested to see... Um, but yeah, overall, I really enjoyed this. Would I watch it again? Probably, but I will for fast forward through scenes that I know are like pointless. And unless I just want to watch them just because they're cool looking scenes. Because four hours is way too long for this movie. But if you saw it, well, let me know what you think in the comments below. Until the next time, peace.